Hi, I'm Brian Garman, the artistic director and co-founder of Berkshire Opera Festival. And this is Opera Lens, our new online series where we take a look at our upcoming season and at all things BOF. My guest today is contralto Alyssa Anderson. Her career has taken her across the United States and Europe in roles ranging from Carmen to Erda in Das Rheingold. This August, she will be starring in BOF's main stage production of Verdi's Falstaff as Mrs. Quickly, one of the Merry Wives of Windsor who does a lot of the comedic heavy lifting in this opera. And she's here today for a little chat. Alyssa, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be on a Zoom with someone that I'm gonna see in person very soon. Uh, is, isn't it exciting? I'm, I'm so very nice. much looking it's forward to seeing nice you here difference. in soon. While we're on the subject, will these be your first live performances since COVID hit or have you been able to find singing opportunities during the pandemic? Well, um, it's certainly been different. Uh, our first back, my first role back inside uh, was two weeks ago in Santa Barbara at Opera Santa Barbara doing that Erda in Das Rheingold. Um, and that was wonderful. That was a really cool experience. The cast was full of friends and it was uh, like a big reunion after a very hard year and a half. So uh, very, very grateful for that and grateful to, to, to keep on working. <laughs> We, want it, we yeah. want it to all come back as fast as possible. We've missed it so much. I, absolutely, we have. Uh, Alyssa, I'd like to, to start this morning by talking with you a little bit about comedy. Your repertoire is quite wide ranging, but you've done a ton of comedy. Uh, I know that you've done Marcellina in Marriage of Figaro, Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd, uh, Madame de l'Altière in Cendrillon. This is just to, to name a few. Uh, and you've received a lot of acclaim for these performances. So is this something you've always had a knack for or how did you develop this comedic talent over the years? Um, much to my parents' chagrin, I, I have been kind of a, a comic um, animal since I was a child. And uh, my mother was a very proper, elegant woman. And uh, I remember telling her once, I'd rather, I'd rather be funny than be a lady. <laughs> so I feel like I've... <laughs> I've combined that a little. I can do both now. Um, but it has always been something that I just lean towards. Um, I love to make people laugh. I think it's the most important thing um, you can do in a day, honestly. So it's uh, it kind of comes natural to me, but I have enjoyed doing all these roles and developing. Every role I do, your timing gets better. You have new ideas. And every time you do these roles again, um, you find something new, something new that's funny. Um, and even in tragedy, I think my one of my mentors in graduate school was Leon Major at University of Maryland. And he said, you always need to find the comedy even in tragedy mm -hmm. um, because there's something there. He said, you know, you never have a tragic situation where there's, there's not one moment of levity ever. Um, and if you don't, it's not very interesting to watch. So um, I think that it's important to to find those ed edges of the character, no matter what you're portraying. Sure, those are very wise words. I think. Do you do you think that uh, playing comedy requires a different skill set from playing tragedy? It's hard to say. I used to think that you couldn't teach comic timing. I don't think that's true anymore. I think you can, and the more you do it, the better you get at it. And anybody who's ever been a stand-up comedian, their first set is never as good as the last one they did. You know, so um, it just takes. It takes experience. I do think sometimes some people are a little more have a knack for it. Um, as I scroll through TikTok on my time off, I find that there are a lot of very very funny people in this world. Um, so now we have <laughs> we have some more venues to showcase that. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a slightly different amount. It's a slightly different skill set. You listen a little bit differently mm -hmm. to your colleagues. I see. Well, Falstaff, of course, is uh, one of the very greatest operatic comedies of all time. And, and Mrs. Quickly is one of the great comic characters of opera uh, and literature as well. She appears in Henry IV and Henry V and Merry Wives of Windsor. Uh, she's also like Ulrika in Balouin Mascara, part of the grand tradition of Verdi's really uh, low voiced ladies. So what can you tell our audience about this character and her music that might be especially notable or interesting to you? <laughs> oh my gosh, um, she's just fabulous. 
I love her. She is, she knows the score. Like she is the smartest person in every room she goes into. Um, I feel like she's kind of like the den mother in a way, or the house, the house mother, if you will, of all of these women. Um, they're all very, very smart, but she, she sees right through every single thing that any man would ever put in front of her. You cannot get anything over this woman. So, um, you know, she, I think she knows she, they see those two letters that he sends. He sends a letter to both Alice and to Meg, Falstaff does, I'm sorry, to, to entice them. And yeah, I mean, they figure it out really, really quickly, but if they hadn't, she would have been right on the ball and been like, y'all, he slid into everyone's DMs. Just don't, you know, <laughs> she, if it was up to her, she'd throw the whole man away. Um, <laughs> but she'd rather embarrass him first uh, and mm -hmm. get him to learn his lesson, which he, he does, um, but just very embarrassingly and multiple times. So uh, she's really the mastermind of all of that. And, and I think it's wonderful. Exactly. And you've done this role before, have you Have you not? This is not I have. the first time with Quicker. I, I did it in 2014. And I will say it is, um, in this music is so, it's so fantastic. It's a true ensemble piece. And, but what makes it quite difficult is he did make up a lot of language. Um, there are some nonsense words and lots of patter that, um, that are very, very tricky. And I think they speak perfectly to the, to the characters, but um, learning it again now, seven years later, it is, there are little nuggets that's ever back in there, but it is, it's a new animal still um, doing it again, because it's, it's very, very complicated to put together, but the most fun show to do with all of your colleagues, you really rely on each other and you're just, you're talking to each other the entire time. So. No, it is extremely complex. There's, there's, there's no doubt. And it's a different kind of, um, you referred to it as a, as a new animal coming back and, and relearning it after seven years, but it was, was also, of course, a new animal at its, at its time. There was, there was nothing in comedy uh, that we had like this be before, and, and not a whole lot afterwards that is, that is from the same mold, although I, you could say probably that um, Puccini's Johnny Skiki might not exist had Falstaff not exist. I know you've sung Zita and Johnny Skiki. Uh, maybe the first act of La Boheme as well is kind of from, from, from the, the, this ultra precise ensemble comedy that's extremely uh, specific. I would I would very much agree with that. And even in the music, you you have some of Alice's lines and a couple little moments for quickly. You have some of that like soaring Verdi melody that you're used to, but. In general, it is a much chattier opera. Um, there are some gorgeous arias, of course, Nanette Pizaria, and, um, but there's there are a lot of there are, there's a lot of text. They have a lot to say, um, but it's all funny. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, you do have the sense, really, <laughs> as it's going on, that it's happening in real time. I mean, it's, right. it's extremely yeah, it, uh, fleet. It will uh, not be hard to get invested in the story at all. That's for sure. <laughs> exactly. At this point in your career, Alyssa, do you uh, feel like you have a, a desert island composer whose music maybe speaks to you or fits your voice better than others or, or a particular favorite role? Um, it's gonna, I know this is, it, for if there's any opera purists, you might disagree with me, but um, Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim, uh, the way he wrote his music, the way he wrote for voices like mine, um, I just feel like I can roll out of bed in any day and sing it. Um, also very complicated composer. If you've seen any of his shows, um, you know that it is it is not simple at all. <laughs> um, but yes, I have done Sweeney Todd. I've done Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd. I've done The Witch and Into the Woods. And uh, it's it strangely feels like a bomb on my voice. I feel like I finish a show and I could do it again, even though it's extremely... Uh, tiring to go through the show. They're very high energy roles. Um, but uh, yeah, I would sing Sondheim anywhere, any day. <laughs> sure. Yeah, extremely complex musically and extremely complex uh, textually as, as well. Emotionally too. And, yeah. and emotionally too, absolutely, absolutely. I, I actually, I like the fact that we're, we're seeing a lot more Sondheim done in the opera house these days. I mean, again, you, you, one will find people who uh, can quibble with these choices, but um, certainly with a piece like Sweeney Todd, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, it, it does not seem out of place to me, to me at all.
No, it really works. And he, he really understood. I know that a lot of people who do straight musical theater um, do those roles, but they work just as well with opera singers who do have some of that musical theater technique. Um, and it's, I, I don't know, it's, it's such, it's a, it's a grand night of singing anytime I get to do one of those. I, I miss uh, Mrs. Lovett. You asked about a, a favorite role and I, I love her. I think she's, she is uh, talk about a flawed anti-hero. Uh, uh-huh. She's a terrible, but you you love her. If she's done right, you you actually have some sympathy for this woman who's you know just at the she's at the end of her rope. She's making choices that are um, to her in her mind non-negotiable. It's just what you mm-hmm. have to do, um, and that's that's an interesting mindset to wrap to wrap around and to play. Right, and a, a great role certainly to to sink your teeth into. Well, Alyssa, I'm afraid that we're nearing the end of our time today, but I can't wait for our audiences to see and hear your quickly at the end of August. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. You're so welcome. And I cannot wait to be up there. It's going to be so much fun. We have um, one heck of a cast you've put together too, I must say. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm very excited about it. And as a reminder to all of you at home, You can learn more about our upcoming season by visiting our website, which is berkshireoperafestival.org, and by subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'll see you all on the next episode of Opera Lens.